With this video, we're going to look at recording an action in Photoshop so that you can perform the same function for a number of different images and rename them without having to do it manually with every single one. Now, this is only going to work for a limited number of uh, things, like changing the canvas size will work. Cropping an image won't, for example, because a crop has to be custom whereas changing the canvas size or the image size, we're just entering in a value. I'm going to start, actually, before I begin, let's just have a look. Um, on the desktop, I have a 36 frames folder. And in one folder, I have my images. They have been numbered in the order in which I want them to appear. Here, I have a one digit naming structure for my early images and a two digit naming structure for the later ones. I'm going to rename them all anyways in Photoshop, but in order for them to appear this way, I really need to use a two digit numbering structure. Otherwise, uh, 11 might conceivably come before one in terms of how the computer will read them. I also have a audio file in the same folder. So I just want to point out that everything I want to work with for my 36 frames project is here together. The audio I want to set my sequence to and all of the individual images already ordered in the way in which I want them to appear. So I'm going to start by opening one of them. And because these are JPEGs, uh, I'm going to open it by right clicking on number one and selecting open with Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. It opens it up in in Photoshop and I want to change the image size. If I go to image image size, I can see that it is don't want to look at it in terms of centimeters. I want to look at it in pixels. So I'll change that to pixels. Resolution is 72, which is what we usually use for screen resolutions, so that's fine. I think I will just change the width to uh, 2500 pixels. I want to make sure this lock is on because I want them to stay uh, the height to change when I change the width. Before I make any actual changes though, I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to set up my action to start recording. So to do this, I'm just going to click on window actions, and that is going to bring up the actions palette. There are a number of presets already included here. Uh, none of those are going to work for what we're going to do. So we are going to create our own set and our own unique action. Click on the folder down here or go up to this drop down menu here and uh, just select new set. So either way will do. I'm used to doing it down here, so I'm just going to click here. And I'm going to call this uh, resize because that's essentially what we're doing with it here. So resize and I now that I have a set, I need to create a new action for it. And I can do this other under the drop down menu at the top. I can just select new action or I can click on this little page icon and that will create a new action as well. So I'm going to give it a name. Um, because I'm making these uh, 25,000 pixels along the horizontal, I'm going to call it 25,000 PX. And I'm just going to click record. So once the record button has been selected, you'll see this little red button has is highlighted. I want to go to image, image size. Again, I want this to be in pixels. And if you want it to automatically appear in pixels, you have to change that in preferences. So under preferences, unit and rulers, you would change it to pixels. You can just change it here though. It doesn't really matter. And 2,500. And you can see when I change the width, it automatically change the height proportionally. So it's going to look the same. It's just going to be a little bit smaller in terms of its pixel dimensions. And this will just make our file size a little bit smaller when we import it into Keynote. 
So I'm going to click OK, and that's the action I want to do. Now I want this to actually um, work on all the images, so I think I will just actually, rather than save this, I'm going to click on Don't Save, and I'm going to run this action on all the images in that particular folder. This is what's known as a batch or an automate. So here we, we go under File, Automate Batch, uh, click on Batch, and we're just going in and doing the resize. So that's perfect. Source is folder. Click on Choose. My folder is on the desktop. So click on Desktop, 36 frames, and Images. So I'm going to choose that folder. And yeah, that's fine. So destination, I want to save it to a new folder. This way I still have my original images so I can go back and, and use them if something goes horribly wrong here or if I need slightly larger images for something. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this images uh, resized because there or actually let's make it more precise. So images 2500 px for pixels. So I've created that. I'm going to choose that. And I am also going to rename my files when I, I do this. So document name, I'm going to call this, uh, I don't actually want to use the document name. So I want this to be called uh, 36 frames. And I want to have a two digit serial number. Now they'll open them in the right order and it will save them in the right order. Starting serial is one. I'm going to click on Windows compatibility. And the last thing I want to add, click on the little plus button here, is a lowercase extension. Okay, so this will save my files as 36 frames followed by a digit and then the file extension. In this case, it will be the same file extension, which means it will be saved as a, a JPEG. Now, the only thing that might stop my action from working perfectly is that JPEGs require um, specific instructions in terms of the quality. So what's probably going to happen is every time it goes to save a file, it's going to ask me what, what I want in terms of compression. I get around this if I recorded a save as command in my actions as well. But for now, I'm just going to keep it relatively simple in, in, in terms of my action and click OK. So it's going to, oh, oh, and actually it's not asking me in terms of what uh, I want for compression. So that's perfect. It's just going through and doing them all one by one. And when that's finished, if I look in my folder on the desktop, I can see I have my 36 frames images. And if I look over here, I can see they're all resized to 2500 by 1658. So they're all consistent in terms of size. And they are in the order I originally specified. 